Hi, welcome. My name's Steve. I'm a former maths teacher, still like my maths, and I'm going to have a go at the Junior Maths Challenge from uh, April 2019. This would have been in the middle of the pandemic, so I'm not sure how many kids actually sat this. Uh, the Junior Maths Challenge is part of a trio. There's the junior, the intermediate, and the senior, and they're all challenges for different school-aged children. So this is year seven to year nine. And it's a different sort of maths. It's a lot more problem solving, a lot more uh, abstract um, e and, and just different types of questions that you just won't see in a normal paper. So if you haven't done one of these before, uh, in the link to the description, if you're watching this on YouTube, there is a link to the actual paper. You can do that ahead of time and then see what you get and uh, what I get. I, won't, I might not get everything right because uh, I might just make a numerical mistake or there might be a question I, I don't see quite see what to do. Um, but uh, the key bits of the math challenge is um, if you are doing this, and this is your level of math, so welcome if you are a year seven to nine pupil who potentially might be doing this in the future and you're looking for to practice some of these, this is a really good thing to do. So you have a go and I'm going to have a go through it with you. But if you're going to time yourself, you probably won't finish all the questions or you won't be able to do all the questions or whatever. So if you can't see how to start a question, skip it and come back to it. Um, and don't sit there guessing. Uh, obviously, it's not if you're the sort of child who a uh, person who's going to do one of these. It's because you're pretty good at maths, and obviously, one of the part of the enjoyment in maths is you know enjoying the nice questions in maths rather than just trying to get everything right. So, don't expect to finish everything. Um, and uh, this way, it scores. You're going to get a score out of um, 100 and something, 160 or something like that. Um, you get five points. For every question you get right from the first 15, uh, and you get six points for every question you get right thereafter, because they get harder. The first 15, there's no penalty, so if you're going to do this in real life, you can have a go at the first 15 at the end. If you couldn't do question 12, have a guess at it. There's no cost to that, so if you just want to get a good score or whatever, that's what you can do. But don't guess at the harder ones, because you actually get penalised for it. And they're very good at putting good wrong answers in there, answers that they expect if someone makes a mistake, they will get. So, you know, if you think, well, it can't be that one, maybe it's this one, they'll be doing that to trick you, so don't do that. Uh, so that's how it's going to work. We're going to try and get full marks as best we can. Um, and uh, we're going to mark everything at the end. So off we go. So question one, how many minutes is it from 12.35 to uh, 1.15 tomorrow morning? So this is, a, sorry, 11.35 to 1.15. So this is 11.35 p.m. to 1.15 a.m. So I'm just going to count how many minutes it is to midnight, it's 25. How many minutes it is to 1 o'clock is 60. And how many minutes it is to 1.15 is 15. And just add these up. 5, it's 10, 2, 8, 9, 10. So 100 minutes, there's an option. Now, the way I approach these is I never look at the options unless it, the question's kind of expecting me to. You know, like which one of these statements is true, and then you have to read them all out. So in this particular case, I will do the question, I will get an answer, and then I will see if my answer's there. If my answer's not there, I've definitely made a mistake. But what I'm not looking to do is looking at see which one of these seems the most likely. Um, so this is uh, just a bit of working with decimals. We're going to add up the bit in the brackets. This is 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.6, minus 0 0.4. So in the brackets, we have 0.2 divided by 0.5. There are a couple of ways of doing this. The way I would do it is if I know dividing by a half, because 0.5 is a half, is the same as timesing by 2. So I would say 0.2 times 2 is 0.4. So weirdly, you, you, you're dividing by decimals. It looks like, you know, on the face of it, that if you've got a decimal divided by a decimal, you get a really small answer. But weirdly, if you divide by a decimal, it actually increases the size of your answer. So you get 0.4. The other way of doing it is you could change 0 0.2 into uh, 2 tenths or 1 fifth, 0 0.5 into a half, and then just divide those or same as 2 tenths times 2 over 1, which gets you 4 tenths, uh, which is the same answer. So there's two ways of doing that one. Sam has eaten three quarters of the grapes. What is the ratio of the number of grapes that remain to the number Sam has eaten? So for every three grapes he eats, there's one grape left. Three quarters. So for every three he eats, there's one he hasn't eaten. The ratio is one to three. Uh, the key bit is here, if you're dealing with quarters, the sides of the ratio should add up to four. So this one here, one to six, 
means for every six of something is one of something. So that would be uh, in seven bits. So that would be sevenths. So there's a little tip for you if you're dealing with fractions and ratios. Our working out is still here because we had to go at this early. We got to question seven before technical difficulties hit. So I'm just doing this by myself. I was doing it with a girl called Lydia. Didn't quite work, uh, but we can see that I think she spotted it quicker than me. That uh, The question is, which of the following five shapes can be cut into four pieces by a single straight cut? It will be E, because if you cut it like that, uh, you would get uh, one big bit and three little bits. So about four bits in total. Uh, thanks to Phil who was watching earlier. Uh, this is pronounced EFA or EFA, EFA, EFA. Um, uh, on Aoife's 16th birthday, so I'm just going to compare the two ages, we've got A and B, very nice of them. When Aoife was 16, Buster was three times her age, so Buster was 48. When Aoife was 21, which is a gap of five years, Buster will also be five years older, will be 53. Which of these is closest to seven? Um, there's a few ways of doing this. The way I do it is just see how far each is away from seven um, and then see which of those numbers is the smallest. So in this particular case, that is 0 0.09 away. That is how do you get from 918, 918 to 1000 is add 82. So this is 0 0.082 away, 0 0.17. The ones above seven are much easier to work out. And 0 0.08. Five away. So the smallest one of these numbers is uh, 0.082. So it's that. One. Okay. Question number seven. The UK's shortest street is Ebenezer Place in Wick. It is two and a bit meters long. Well, however, the Trans Canada Highway, one of the world's longest roads, is apparently 7,821 kilometers in length. Approximately how many times longer than the street is the highway? Now the key word here is here before you start to worry about the numbers is that you're looking at the answers. There's no way that that this goes into this exactly. It just doesn't. So they've rounded it. So we're just going to round it and hopefully we'll get close to one of these answers or exactly one of these answers. So uh, in the UK, the street is roughly two metres long. The approximately symbol is kind of that wiggly line there and in Canada the street is approximately 8,000 kilometers. Now when Lydia was working this through with me before technical difficulties she just said she changed them both to the same units I think that's a really good thing if you're dealing with two things and one's in different units to the other it's very hard to compare them so what we're going to do is we're going to change to Canada instead of 8,000 kilometers we're going to change it to meters now there's a thousand meters in a kilometer so 8,000 kilometers is 8 million meters. And how many times longer than the street is the highway? How many times bigger is uh, 8 million to 2? Well, you just divide them. So 8 million divided by 2 is 4 million. So our answer is going to be A. Okay. So for the ones where the diagram is potentially writable, we're going to maybe write in this diagram, although in the real thing, all your working house be, out is to be a separate piece of paper, so you might have to redraw this diagram. But the diagram shows a kite, PGRF, inside the rhombus, PQRS. So the middle shape is a kite, the top shape is a rhombus, um, and it's got four angles. So there's two angles of 35 here and here, and two angles of 120 here and here. What is the size of angle FPG? So the way they indicate angles, if they give you the angle FPG, it will always, unless they say otherwise, it will be the acute angle made up by the lines FP and PG. So the letter in the middle is where the angle is. The line FP is this line here, and the line PG is this line here. So the angle they want us to get is that one there. And if I was ever doing a angles question, if I can't, immediately see how to work this out if there's not an immediately enough numbers to help me I would work out as many angles as I can well there's two easy ones you can work out you can work out these two because it's just angles in a triangle 120 plus 35 is 155 so that's 25 and because these numbers are the same that's 25 
And then the key bit is to see that this particular question is talking about a rhombus. And in a rhombus, opposite angles are equal. So these two are equal and these two are equal. So this angle is the same as this angle. So all four angles add up to um, 360. But because it's symmetrical, as in these two are the same and these two are the same, the ones adjacent to each other add up to 180. So the quickest way of doing this is to say, if this is 120 plus 25 plus 25, the blue one needs to make it 180. You could, you could, you could do some other things, but that's the way I spotted to do it. So 120, 145, 170, it must be 10 to add up to 180. Right, uh, so Lydia lost me at this point, so I've redone all the ones we did with her because I'm filming it, but Lydia lost me at this point, so now I'm on my own, I've not seen these questions before. What is 50% of 18.3 plus 18.3% 18 18 of 50? Now, weirdly, this is a lot easier than it seems. If you know, a uh, little trick, so you know that... Uh, 42% of 10 is exactly the same as 10% of 42. And it's all to do with how um, decimals and, and percentages of things work. 50% is 0 0.5 uh, times that. And so effectively, you're getting the same. So 18.3% is that divided by 100. Well, if you're doing that times that, but dividing that one by 100, it's the same as doing that times that and dividing that one by 100, so you get the same. So this is effectively, because the because the percentage of a number is the same as the number of as the other way around, this is effectively 50% of 18.3 plus 50% of 18.3. So you've got half of 18.3 twice, which means the answer is just going to be 18.3. I don't actually need to work out what 50% of 18.3 is, and I definitely don't need to work out what 18.3% of 50 is, because that's pretty difficult. Yeah, I think that the, the wrong options there actually make it easy. If you look at the options, that's one way you could probably actually work out it's this one, because I think there's not enough close options there. What is the last digit of the smallest positive integer whose digits add to 2019. So what we're looking for is, okay, I think I know what the answer is going to be. What we're looking for is a number, 2318254421, where if you add 2, add 3, add 1, add 8, add 2, add 5, add 4, add 2, add 1, add 2, add 2, add 1, adds up to 2019. Now there'll be loads of numbers that do that, but what we're looking for is the smallest. So to make the number where all the digits add up to 2019 as small as you can, we need as few digits as possible, so we need as many nines as possible. So our number is going to have loads and loads of nines. Nine, nine, nine. 3, 9, or whatever, whatever. So basically, we want that. Now, obviously, if you decrease any of these 9s, you might have to add more digits. That's not what you want. So we there's a number. We could, each, we could even work out what the number is if you wanted to, but there's a number that adds up to 2019. Now, that is not divisible by 9. That would give you, I think that is 9 remain. If you divide that by 9, you get a remainder of 3. So that's where the 3s come from. Now, if this is my number, it's 9999999999 with a 3 in there, the way to make this number as small as possible is to put the 3 at the front. So our actual number is probably going to be 39999 with enough 9s to make 2019. So I believe the last digit is going to be 9. So you want as many nines as possible, so you're using the fewest digits, and then if you have a digit that isn't a nine, you want to put that to the front. So the last digit will always be a nine. And in fact, it will always be a nine, whatever this number is, as long as this number is um, moderately high enough that you need a nine. 
I think it will always be a nine. So whatever that did, whatever that number is here, if it was 2010 or 2008 or 1006 or something, it will still be a nine. Two players, X and Y, take alternate turns in a game, starting with the diagram alongside. On each turn, one player writes one of one, two or three in an empty circle so that no two circles connected by an edge contain the same number. The player loses when they cannot go. In each of the five diagrams below, it's Y's turn. Oh, I haven't got the options. Oh, I'm going to have to skip this one. I was meant to copy the options in as well and put them underneath. All right, we'll pass that. All right. Jamal writes down a sequence of six integers. So question 11, we're not going to get right. cannot be converted to 15.2 centimetres. Jamal writes down a sequence of six integers. The rule he uses is after the first three terms, each term is the sum of the three previous terms. His sequence is blank, 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 8, 13, 25. What is his first term? So what he means by this is that 8 is these three added together, 13 is these three added together, and 25 is these three added together. So we're going to start with 25 and work backwards. 25 is 13 plus 8 plus whatever this is. So 13 plus 8 is 21. That must be 4. 13 is 8 plus 4 plus whatever this number is. So 8 plus 4 is 12. That must be a 1. And 8 is 4 plus 1 plus something. So 4 plus 1 is 5. That must be a 3. In how many different ways can you spell out JMC starting at the centre and moving to the next letter in a neighbouring square horizontally, vertically or diagonally each time? How many different ways? See, we're looking for unique paths from J to M to C. So I think what we're going to do... So you could sit there drawing these out, you see, there's going to be quite a lot. If you look at the options, and I'm going to give you a clue here. Um, if you're ever doing one of these where you're just trying to like, count, for example, how many triangles are in this shape, or how many ways can you go around this diagram, or how many JMCs can you see, the wrong answers will nearly always be less than the right answer. So I, my, guess, my guess is it's, it's definitely one of the top three. It might probably be 25 or 32. I think they've given you 25 because it's a 5 by 5 grid. My guess is going to be 32 because if you start counting them and you miss any, that's where you get the wrong answers. You're rarely going to overcount these. So my guess, my tip to you is if you're going to have a guess at one of these questions, that you guess one of the higher numbers if going wrong gives you a lower answer. And if going wrong gives you a higher answer, you guess the lower numbers. So uh, my guess, my guess is I'm going to, work out how many ways to, to get to, for, to a C from an M. So this M will get you, you can get to five C's from that M, and that one, and that one, and that one. So if, for example, if you go from J to this M, there are five different C's you can get, so you can do that way five times. There are three different C's you can get from each of these M's. So J, M, C, J, M, C, J, M, C. 5, 10, 15, 20, 23, 26, 29, 32. So my guess was right, it's 32. And basically, if you miss any of those out, you're likely to get one of the lower wrong answers. Each edge in the diagram has length one centimetre. What is the length of the longest path that can be followed along the edges, starting at a vertex and without revisiting any vertex? So this is another one of those. My guess is it's going to be one of the higher numbers, because if you, if you don't get the longest path, you'll get a lower answer. So basically, if you start at one of these edges, what's the longest path you can go? So uh, I know there is a way to do these, and I'm going to have a look at uh, maybe demonstrating it to you. What the way is but basically let's if we start here we're just going to trace a path one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen 
14. So I'm missing something here. What am I missing? Uh, without revisiting any vertex. Okay. So our error was one, two, three, four, five. If we go into the triangle now, we'll visit, hit this vertex and we'll stop at eight, six, seven, eight. So we'll go six, seven, eight, nine. I think that's the longest one I can make. Because if I draw this line in, I've hit this vertex twice. If I draw this line in, I've hit both of these twice. And if I draw, if I go into the triangle, I don't get as many edges as if I go into the square. So I think it's that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All four L shapes are shown in the diagram are to be placed in the 4x4 grid so that all 16 cells are covered and there is no overlap. Each piece can be rotated or reflected before being placed and the black dot is visible from both sides. How many of the 16 cells of the grid could contain the black dot? So what we're looking for is, sorry my uh, pad doesn't quite go all the way to the end, what we're looking for So that's one way to fill the grid. You could do that twice, which means you could get the black dot in that space or that space or that space or that space or that space. And you could flip this upside down so you can get you can get all the edges and that one. So basically you do this diagram to get this one and this one. And then you flip the two pieces to get this one and this one. And then through symmetry, the same would happen in the bottom. And in fact, if you if you imagine twisting the space round, so if you did if you did it this way, oops, get the idea. If you did it that way, you'd also be able to get that one, and then by symmetry that one, and by symmetry that one. I assume it's that one. So we definitely can get all the edges. We can definitely get all the edges just by symmetry. Is there any way? So that's 12. Is there any way to get the black dot in the center? Can I put? Yes, I can. I can do that and that and that. I, uh, apologies, it looks a bit like a swastika, but yeah, you get the idea. So let's erase that and not leave that on. But yeah, I think we can get all the spaces in the grid done. So you can definitely get a black dot in a corner. You can get it on one of the edges and by symmetry you can do it. So basically all you need to do is check these four. If you can get it in these four, by symmetry you can get them in all of them. Okay, next. Tamsin writes down three two-digit numbers. I'm going to... Quit Discord because it's just being annoying. Sorry, one second. Right. Okay. Here we go. Question sixteen. Higher, higher and nearer. Yeah, no, I am recording this. Um, I was, I, I was going to um, do this with someone else, but it was technical difficulty, so I'm doing it by myself. I'm a marking my answers after. Yes, I am. I'm going to go back at the end and mark all my answers. So I haven't seen any questions before. So, uh, okay, me reading your chat. MC squared is sixteen. Yeah. Hey. Yeah, so apologies. So basically I was doing it with someone else and uh, I've got my streaming software open and the program I'm using and my tablet and Discord so I could speak to it and another software so I could broadcast my screen so it wasn't a delay and it didn't work and we cut out. So I'm just doing this by myself. So welcome along. Hey, Sam. Oh, Sam. Uh, it's not Ingolsan anymore, is it? It's Sam Vasey. Sam Vasey. Sam 
Yeah. So I am recording this live for uh, YouTube as well. So those people who are wanting to do it. So if you are watching on YouTube, sorry, I'm just chatting to people who are, have joined me while I'm recording it. Hey, AJ. <laughs> Uh, so I'm just having a go at them. If I, uh, so I'll read them out and let you have a think. But um, uh, Tamsin writes down three two-digit integers. Okay, no worries. Did you get them all right or did you have a go at them all? Tamsin writes three two-digit integers. One is square, one is prime, and one is triangular. She uses the digits two, four, five, six, seven, and 8 exactly once each. Which prime does she write? So, the triangle numbers, oh good, do you mark it as well? Triangle numbers are 1, 3, 6, 10, 15, 21, 28, 36, 45, 55, 66, 78, uh, 91. And the way you work out triangle numbers is you start with one and then you add one more number each time. So one, add two, add three, add four, add five, add six, add seven. And then the square numbers are, I'm just going to do, uh, well, one, uh, four, nine, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81 and there's no zero so I'm not going to bother with any past that so what we're looking for is ways to make uh, a number from each list where you have um, two digits left that can be made into a prime so square numbers you could do 36 and then you could do apologies you could do 36 on either, couldn't you? Uh, so you could do 36 square. And my software's bugged now. So you could do 36 as a square. You could do 78 as the triangle, which left leaves you with 4 and 5. That doesn't work. So what other squares can you make? You, can, you can't do 25, you don't have a 2, you can't do 49, so you could do 64. Oh dear, and then you've got to have a 3, 5, 7, 8. So you could do 64 and 78, and you're left with uh, a 3 and a 5. So 53, I think, that would work. I imagine there's only one solution there. A rectangle is three times as long as it is high. The area of a square is 12 times the area of the rectangle. <laughs> so a rectangle is three The area of the square is 12 times the area of the rectangle. So that is an area of 3. 3 twelves is 36. So we've got a square that's 36. 6 and 6. This is a perimeter of 6, 12, 18, 24. So the perimeter of this is 24. The perimeter of the rectangle is uh, 1 add 3 add 1 add 3 is 8. So the ratio is 3 to 1. It's 3 times bigger. Uh, so AJ, if you are doing this, I'm probably going to do some harder ones. I'm probably going to have a go at, from the same year, I'm probably going to have a go at the intermediate one, which I hope to get them all right, and then the senior one, which I rarely come close. Well, I do come close to getting them all right. I think I've done, like, all but one before, but... Uh, the senior one is potentially pretty tough. What fraction of the inches from 1 to 8,000 inclusive are cubes? Uh, oh, that's correct. So basically, the cube root, because they've given you a cube number of 8,000, is 20. 20 times 20 times 20 is 8,000. 
So from 1 to 8,000 is 1 to 20. So there's 20 numbers out of 8,000 numbers. That cubes. Because basically if you cube 1 through 20, you get a number between 1 and 8,000. You cube anything bigger than 20, you don't. So there are only 20 out of 8,000, and all you'd have to do is simplify. That's 2 out of 800, or 1 out of 400. For each row and each column in each of the bold 2 by 3 rectangles in the grid has to contain each of the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. One number in each cell. What number should go in the cell mark next? This is just a Sudoku, isn't it? Am I just misreading this? So each of the bold rectangles, so each kind of group of six. Uh, so the intention is, yeah, but the, my intention is to do it with uh, a friend of mine um, and kind of work through them together as a bit more of a social thing, so I'm chatting as I'm going along. Um, but yeah, I'm going to have a go, hopefully at a later date, if this video goes well, I will also put one up for the intermediate and the senior ones, and I will announce when I'm doing them. Um, I'm actually quite enjoying it so far. It's on the relatively easy side for me, though. So, uh, it's just a Sudoku, so we're just trying to get the X. So I'm trying to work on this cell, so I'm attacking this cell first. So that can't be a 1, so there's a 1 here, which means there's a 1 in the middle, which means that's a 1. So it's just a Sudoku, and that's a 2, because there can't be a 2 there. So there's a choice between 3, 4, and 5. Hang on. It can't be a 4, because of this 4 here. That was quite quick. So I think it's four. Yeah, that would be appreciated, AJ. Followers are always appreciated too, if you are watching. The X could be the two. Oh, you are right. Thank you very much. Yeah, okay, so maybe I made a mistake there. Oh yeah, and the X could be the one as well, couldn't it? I mean, no, it can't. The X can't be the one. The X can't be the one because you need to have a one in this in this column, and it has to be in the top two. Yeah, okay. So am I being silly? So that can't be a three. That can't be a three. So that's a three, which means X isn't three or one. So it's two or four. That has to be a two because of the two here and here. Which means X can't. That can't be a two. That can't be a two. X is two. So I actually got one wrong. Well spotted. Well, you've, you've solved it already, haven't you? <laughs> Emily writes down the largest digit of prime such that each of its digits is prime. Krish writes down the smallest two digit of prime so that each of its digits is prime. Okay, so the largest, so if we're looking at prime numbers, so prime numbers have to be, so it's not 99, 97, so it can't be 90 something, can't be 80 something. So if it was 90-something, 9's not prime. If it was 80-something, 8's not prime. So it has to be 70-something. So you've got 79. Is that prime? Yeah, so 79's prime. So we think Emily's number, the highest prime number you can... Oh, no, it's not. You can't have a 9. So we think Emily's number's in the 70s. It can't be 9. 77's not prime. 75 isn't prime, so it's 73. So this is a prime number, and both digits are prime, and it's the highest one I can think of. Chris writes down the smallest two-digit prime, such that each of his digits are prime. So we're looking for 11. No, one's not prime. 23. So we think it's 50. Yeah, you can't have a prime number starting with a one. You can't have a, a Chris can't have a number starting with a one because one's not prime. So it has to start with at least a two. Twenty-one isn't prime, but twenty-three is. So we think it's seventy-three take twenty-three. Yeah, I I was like that as well. Oh, you you were using one. Oh, so you got a larger answer than fifty. Oh, so you I assume you did seventy-three take eleven, like I tried to do briefly. Okay, the diagram shows a regular hexagon, P, Q, R, S, T, U, and a square, P, Q, V, W, and an equilateral triangle, X, V, W. 
What is the size of the angle? X, V, R. X, V, R. So we're looking for this angle here. It's always the smallest angle made up by the lines X, V, and V, R. All right, so the fewer, I, I can't see immediately how to do this, so let's go. So we know this is 90, we know this is 60. Um, because this this line's parallel to this line at the top, this makes a uh, alternate angle. So this will be 60 and this will be 60. So I don't know if we need to know that. That's 60 as well. Uh, and angles in a hexagon is 120. What am I missing? They've only joined this line in, line in to make the angle, haven't they? This isn't the regular shape or anything, is it? I'm one angle short, so I can work this one out as well. That's 30 because it's nine, it's it's 120 in a hexagon. Take off this 90, so that's 30. But I need to know one of these three, and I'm just trying to work out how to do it. Oh, this is isosceles because. The hexagon is regular, so all of the sides are the same, which is also the same as the square. So this side is the same as that side. So if that's 30, these two add up to 150, or they're 75 each. And then you're looking for 90 plus 60 plus 75 for these three. And then you're going to take it off 360. Uh, there might have been another way to do that. 150, 225... Uh, 360 take away 205, 225 is 135. That is an option I've got. Uh, is that how you did it, AJ? And Sam, if you've had a go? In the multiplication shown alongside uh, T, R, A and P are all different digits. What is the value of R? So we have got to wrap times nine is part. All right. <laughs> you thought it looks like an isosceles, let's hope it is, yeah. Uh, I'm slightly more rigorous than that, but you were right, so you got it right. Um, all right. Trap times nine is part. You've got a number when you times it by nine, the digits reverse. And they're all different digits.
So weirdly, I don't know whether this is doable, because if this is one of them, and this is nine of them, then those two together have to be ten of them. So we know that this might not work. We know that trap plus part equals trap with a zero. So we know P plus T is nothing. This might not work. P plus T is nothing, carry one. A plus I is P. Hmm. What are we trying to work out? R. Uh, so there must be a carry. A plus I is P. There must be a carry because an R plus A can't be A unless R is zero. And R can't be, or could R be zero? Yeah, if there's no carry, R is zero. But if there is a carry, then R is nine. No, hang on, can it be nine? For R plus, even if there was a carry, so there can't be a carry, because then A, a is zero. So I think R is just zero. So so basically, I've got to this point, I hope you can understand me, that because if this is nine of them and this is one of them, together there's ten of them. P plus T is zero, which means they both must be values, which means you've got a carryover. So A plus R is P, doesn't really help you. Oh, hang on, it does, yeah. Yeah, R has to be zero, I think. I don't think there's a, a, a number R can be to get R plus A is A if R isn't zero. Because even if R was nine and you got a carry, that would mean A is zero. But A can't be zero because then... Oh, oh, you no, know, could A be zero? One of A or R is zero, I think. Oh, dear. Am I going down the wrong path? Oh, I don't normally like doing this. I might, I think my feeling is it's zero. So let's say that's whatever. Let's say that's let's say that's four and six. Oh, it can't be. P has to be. Oh no, hang on. Yeah, and then that would be four, which would give a would be. Three and R zero. So this work. And then that case it would be three plus zero is three. Six plus four is zero carry one. Oh so T is one and P is nine. So nine one. P can't be nine. Oh, A is 8. And that works. 9, 1, 8, 9. No, 8, 8. 1, 9, 0, 1. So I've worked out that R can be 0. So let's just double check that. So we think that it's 1089 times 9. 9 times 9 is 81, carry 8. 9 times 8 is 72, add 8 is 0. So 80, carry 8, 8. 9 times 1 is 9. Yeah, I think it's 1089 times 9 is 9801. I do not know if there is a more elegant way of doing that. I imagine that is. That's nice. I I like the question. I don't like my method.
Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's actually a much elegant method. So uh, I'm just going to go through. So it is zero, we believe. So with the method I had, I'm just going to go through AJ's method. So basically, um, times nine. You're gonna get uh, you're gonna get a four digit number. Well, um, for you to get a four digit number when you do T I P, uh, T would have to be one because if it's any other digit, you'll get a five digit number. Nine times two thousand would be eighteen hundred, uh, eighteen thousand or something. So T has to be one. So T times nine gets you nine, and if R wasn't zero, then anything you times nine by will also give you a carryover. And you know it can't also be one. Why couldn't T be zero, AJ? Does that not work? Not whether it says T isn't zero. Yeah, that's, that's a more elegant way of doing it, but I don't know how you'd go through whether T is zero. The diagram shows two squares, J, K, L, M, and P, Q, R, S. The length of J, K is 6. Yeah, maybe. Let's have a read of it. It just says they're different digits, I guess, but yeah. My, my intuition is it usually isn't zero, but like... The diagram shows two squares, J, K, L, M, and P, Q, R, S, and the length of J, K is 6, and th th that of P, Q is 4. So this square's got a 6 side, and this square's got a 4 side. The vertex K is on the midpoint of the side R, S. What is the area of the shaded region? So this is halfway down this length. So this length's two. Can we can we assume that this length is one? I'm not sure we can, you know. So I could, if I know that's one, this is one of those things where I think this is probably going to be one, but I, I don't know whether I can prove that's one. Because if that's one, you can work it out. You can basically work out this triangle here, and then you could work out this triangle here and take it off the square. Shows I haven't done maths in a while. What if we just do this? Would that be better? So this would be two times, so that would be six and that would be two. The area of this bit would be 12.
there this triangle would be 8 times 10 halved the area of the whole triangle would be um the area of the whole triangle would be 40 so the area of this bit plus this bit would be 40 minus 12 will be 28 so I think the area of both squares, take away the white bit, gets you the shaded bit. And if you kind of make this into a big triangle, a right angle triangle, you can work it out. So I'm just going to do that again, just so it's clear. Sometimes you have to create extra lines. Now my guess, my initial guess is this might be one, but I can't find a way to prove it. So I'm going to add in an extra line here and here. So that's six and two. The area of that's 12. The area of the triangle made up by M, this point, and Q is going to be 8, which is this 2 plus this 6. And 6 plus 4 is 10. So the area of the whole bit is 40. So the area of just the light bits is going to be 40, which is the whole bit, take off the 12. So the area of the white bits, this bit and this bit, is 28. And the area of the two squares, take off the white bits, gets me the answer. So the area of the two squares is 36 plus 4 times 4 is 16 minus 28. So it's going to be 52. Take off 28 is going to be 24. And that is an option we've got. Diagram shows a regular heptagon. Which of these expressions is equal to P plus Q plus R plus S plus T? Wow. Confirm the short bit is not one. Yeah, I, di I didn't think it. I couldn't find a way to say that it bisected it. So, all right. So. Regular heptagon. So heptagon is seven sides. Am I just going to work out each of them separately? So this, this might take a while. I can't find an elegant way of doing this. So a regular heptagon is going to be... So to work out the angles in a polygon, in a regular polygon, it's going to be 360 divided by the number of sides. That gets you the exterior angle. So that's what, that's what Q and T are. So this equals Q and it also equals T. To get P, it's going to be 180, take off whatever this angle is. And to get R, well, that's, that's this value. The answer is in terms of Q. Oh, yeah, much better. Let's try that again. So to get Q, Q is the num is 360 divided by 7. Uh, T equals Q. So Q is also T. Uh, P is 180 minus Q. And R is 180 minus Q over 2, and that also equals S. Yeah, so basically, because this is 180 minus Q, and then if you half it, because this triangle is isosceles, but you've got two of them. So R plus S, this is two of them, is 180 minus Q. Okay, so we've got 180 minus Q, because that's P, plus Q, oops, Plus uh, R, R and S is this, but not divided by 2. Because if R is half of this and S is half of this, then R and S together are just that. So 180 minus Q 
and then t is just the same as q. So we've got minus q minus q plus q plus q, so I think it's just 360. I think my answers might have fallen out, but uh, not elegantly. Thank you, AJ. And lastly, the diagram shows the first 15 positive integers arranged in a triangle. Those, these numbers are to be rearranged. That, oops, these numbers are to be rearranged so that five integers along each edge of the triangle have the same sum. Unlike the example shown, when this is done, what is the greatest possible such sum? So my first reaction is to put as many of the smallest numbers as you can in there. So if we put one, two, three here and then try to make everything else as big as we can. I've got something wrong in question four. Right, well, I'll check the answers. If I've got it wrong, I've got it wrong. I'll check the answers at the end. Oops. Yeah, that's fine. So the diagram shows the first 15 positive inches in a triangle. Each of the numbers are to so 5 inches on each edge of the triangle with the same sum. When this is done, what's the greatest possible sum? So my guess is it's something like if we have our triangle, we have 1, 2, and 3, or, or some small numbers in the middle, and then on the edge, to make the sums as po high as possible, you probably need 15, 14, and 13. That way, there's two of the highest numbers on each edge. Is there a way to do this without just kind of going for it? Well, hypothetically, let's just say we've got 4, 5, 12, 6, 7, 11, 8, 9, 10. Then this plus this plus this is the total of the three sides, as long as you've got 15, 14, 13. And if they don't quite match, all you do is swap out like a four for a three or something. So I think that's it. And then all we're going to do is add up these, uh, counting 15, 14, and 13 twice, and divide by three. don't know if that works. Four plus five is nine. 15, 22, 30, 39, 49, 60. 72 plus 13 twice plus 14 twice plus 15 twice 2 10 6 7 10 11 12 13 14 and divide this by 3 is 53 what am i doing wrong Is there a way to make 53? That's the issue. Let's see if we can do this. If there's not a way to make 53, uh, it'll be 52 where you swap out one of the numbers for a 1. So to make 53, with 15 and 14, you need... That's 29. Oops. So with 15 and 14, you need another... Uh, 24, is it? 29 and 24. With 14 and 13 is 27, you need 27, 
27, you need 26. And with 15 and 13 is 28, you need 25. So 12, so basically a total of 24, 26 and 25 is a total of 75. So my maths is wrong somehow, I got 72. But there's where the missing three comes from. I can't quite do 75. So I can't go do, so I think it's 52. I, I think again, I don't like my method. So my guess is 52. We are gonna check the answers now. So I'm gonna get the answers up on the other screen and we're gonna mark uh, if I just get the answers up, we're going to mark it as we're going. So if you want to go back to the start, if you've done this alongside with us, if you want to go back to the start, we're going to mark it and see how whether we've got right. I believe I've got at least one wrong according to what AJ says. So question one is A, it is 100. Question two is E, it's 0.4. Question three is A, it's one to three. Question four is E. Question five is C. Question six is B. Question seven is A. Question eight is also A. Yeah, question nine, I like that question, is uh, B. Question 10 is E, I also like that one. Question 11, so if you did this on the paper, I haven't got the answers because I forgot to paste the answers in, it would be D. So if you did question 11 by yourself, it would be D. Question 12 is also D. Question 13 is E. Question 14 is, ah, so I've done something wrong. Oh yeah, I've seen what I've done. So I actually got this one wrong. So it is not C, it is D. If I start again, so it's D, if I start again, weirdly, instead of doing this one, if I did this two, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, for the same reason that I did the square, not the triangle, I should have done the triangle and not this line here. So I got one wrong. Question 15 is E. Question 16 is C. Question 17 is D. Question 18 is C. Question 19 is B, so I'm actually going to count that as one I got wrong as well. I'll be really harsh on myself because uh, someone pointed that out in chat. Question 20 is E. Question 21 is D. Question 22 is A. Yeah, they've done it a lot more algebraic than I did it. Yeah, question 23 is B, question 24 is uh, B. So what have I done? I'm going to come back to this one because there's a lot of working out here. And 25 is D. So 24 got wrong. So before we go any further, let's have a look at what we did. So I got uh, question 9, question nine, which, which which was the Sudoku question? Was it 14? So I got question 14 wrong. I got question... Um, 20 wrong and I got question 24 wrong so I got one wrong here one wrong here and one wrong here so I'm going to get 14 fives is 70 I'm going to get I got nine, eight questions right here so eight sixes is 48 and then I'm going to lose one and two points and a minus three so in total I got 115 as my final score. A uh, few errors. Now this is the only one I couldn't see my error in, so let's have a look at what they've done.
Oh, uh, I've seen it, yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try and explain what they've done. Yeah, I I see what they've done. So I got R. So the this this angle here, this green angle here, is the same as P. And P is 180 minus Q. So to get R, I would do. Oh yeah, yeah. I've, I know why I've got R wrong. It's 180 minus 180 minus Q over two. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So I understand what I did wrong there. I've just spotted it. So it's this bit is the mistake. But the way they've done it is they have said that this triangle here, oops, it's the same, but it's this, the same as this one. So R and S are equal. But, so R and S plus P is 180. I should probably not use my mouse. I should probably use my pen. That's what I've got a pen for. So they've said that P is this one, S is that one, and R is that one. So those three together make 180. Plus Q plus T, but we know T and Q are the same. So it's actually just 180 plus 2Q. Which is a lot easier. That was actually quite an easy one once you spot it, once you spot that trick. What I did is I said R, well I know to work out the to work out R is the same as this one. So I would take off this angle from 180 and do that. So what I should do is 180 minus 180 minus P divide by 2. Which is just P over 2. So R is P over 2. And then I would get then then my method would uh, yeah Q sorry Q R is Q over two so basically then I would get the my method I would get P which was 180 minus Q plus Q over two plus Q over two plus Q plus Q that's how I, that's how I would work with my method I just got I just got this value wrong for R because I missed off uh, a 180. Alright, there is my score. AJ beat me. AJ got full marks I believe. Yeah, AJ got full marks. There's some nice questions in there so if you have followed along live, thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate the follows if you haven't done so already. If you are watching a later date, if you're watching this on YouTube or some other medium, uh, I'm probably going to try and do some more of these. I will get better at presenting it. I think this is the first time I've used this uh, fancy pen and the tablet and hopefully I will get someone else along with me and we can kind of work through some problems together. Uh, but that is the Junior Math Challenge April 2019. I'm going to do the intermediate one April 2019 and then the senior one. But the chances of me getting all the senior ones right are pretty low. So we will see. I am doing these first off. I haven't pre-looked at any of these questions uh, other than this slight peak when I was copy and pasting. But other than that, I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. So I'm going to end the YouTube video. Uh, please like, share, subscribe, and pop along to Twitch and follow me there. All the links will be in the description below. Uh, but yeah, I'll see you soon.